Hello. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. I have some questions about UNRWA. Um, perhaps it's helpful to start with the basics, if I can. Um, what exactly is UNRWA? So thanks, Senator. UNRWA is a UN body that was established by the UN General Assembly, and it's specifically mandated to provide relief and social services uh, to Palestinian refugees. What makes UNRWA um, different? What are there other UN bodies um, with the mandate to provide basic services to Palestinian refugees? Well, UNRWA was specifically set up to provide those um, um, those relief and social services, uh, Senator. So it was a dedicated body to provide it for, to Palestinians. Okay. And how long has the Australian government funded UNRWA? Since uh, 1951. And in relation to their work in Gaza, uh, we know that, that, that Gaza is controlled by the terrorist group Hamas. So I just want to go through some history. Um, when did Hamas take over Gaza? They took over Gaza completely in 2007. And since then, governments of both persuasions have continued to fund UNRWA. How exactly does the Australian government provide funding? Presumably, we don't we don't deal with Hamas. How do we provide that funding um, since 2007? So we provide a, um, an annual contribution to UNRWA, um, and UNRWA uses that money to provide um, health and education services and other relief services. Uh, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank and also in um, Syria, Jordan and Lebanon. So they have five areas of operation. Is there a, um, a framework agreement that funding is provided under? Yes, there are frame, fra there are strategic partnership agreement um, that there is. We've had several of these over, over the years, um, at least that I'm familiar with. Um, and that sort of sets out, they're a multi-year agreement, it sets out um, the, how we're going to provide the funding um, and, um, in, and also in, in requiring UNRWA to um, meet uh, various conditions. And you said there, there's been several agreements. The, when was the strategic framework agreement with UNRWA first designed and agreed to? Well, the most recent one that was operational was in 2016, but there are there have been earlier ones, as I understand it. But I'd have to take on notice that's um, fine. all that, all the, the details. The current agreement. Yeah, that's right. It was extended. Uh, so the the current agreement, was the initial agreement went from 2016 to 2020, and then it was extended. Uh, it's been extended three times, and it went to the end of uh, 2023, Senator. Thank you. What laws does Australia have to ensure that fund, this funding doesn't flow to a terrorist regime like Hamas? Um, does DFAT have its own controls to ensure? Sure. So we, I mean, there are general laws, um, which uh, in terms of our um, the criminal code and also our sanctions uh, in domestic um, legislation, DFAT also um, uh, has its own controls. Um, uh, as I said, the um, partnership agreement sets out requirements in relation to um, counter-terrorism, anti-fraud, anti-corruption. Um, we also um, uh, we have processes where we evaluate um, UNRWA's uh, compliance um, with those requirements, um, and so on. So uh, we we take a close interest in these issues and uh, we have appropriate frameworks and controls in Thank place. You. Is UNRWA, um, from what you understand, is UNRWA transparent with Israel about its personnel? Do they provide lists? UNRWA says it provides lists to Israel mm -hmm. um, annually, Senator, of all its employees. Of all its okay. employees. You will be aware of uh, a letter sent by members of the Australian community that raised concerns about UNRWA's activities. Um, were these sorts of allegations raised in the letter new? 
over over time, from time to time, Senator, there have been allegations about uh, un members of UNRWA staff. Um, that, um, when when these do things do happen, we take them up vigorously with UNRWA, and um, and UNRWA. Um, has, an un has undertaken um, to have a zero tolerance and these sorts of things, and they also investigate them. So in relation to um, the allegations late last year to which that letter referred, um, in one case, um, there was the case of someone allegedly holding people hostage in their house. They, UNRWA um, raised that, sought additional information from the, from the journalist that provided that report. The information wasn't um, ever provided. Um, I think Can I just ask, you've skipped over a, a key piece of information, and I, I these allegations, I understand advocacy So they groups, are pursued. So just advocacy groups, I understand, have a role in raising those allegations. I, I just want to make that clear, I'm not. But how long have these types of allegations been raised by advocacy groups about UNRWA? Oh, off and on for years, Senator. Okay. I can, in my experience, uh, since at least, well, in my experience working on Middle East issues, I can remember back to 2012, there were some allegations. So, okay. um, And I'm about to um, ask you some questions about those allegations or, or essentially what action has been taken. Sure. What action has Australia taken to address these concerns and when was this done? So pertaining to the letter that you mentioned, um, first of all, look, you know, these allegations are serious and they need to be investigated. So we do try and unpack them. Um, we, ha we do t take it up with UNRWA. Um, we have done so um, through initially with those allegations through our representative office in Ramallah. Um, and in, in, in those cases, I did explain one, one example, which we also took up um, the, some of those allegations with us during Assistant Foreign Minister Watts's office um, in December and um, later during um, the Foreign Minister's visit. So that, those things we have pursued with UNRWA, we've had a range of meetings with them about actions that they've taken um, in relation to them. And, and so on. So we are confident. I mean, UNRWA takes these issues seriously because they know there are matters of um, public interest, and um, I... and they know that there's a, um, you know, frankly, there are groups that are focusing on these issues and are seeking to um, attack UNRWA at every corner, at every turn. Can I ask about those groups? Mm. Um, I... You refer to advocacy groups, or perhaps I use that term, or organisations that yeah. compile these reports and make these types of allegations uh, since as far back as you say, 2012. And probably long um, before, Senator, probably but that's as far that. as my memory stretches back. And we understand there are reasons people do that. But what, what do we know about these organisations? I know you, if you can speak in general terms, what sort of organisations are we talking about? Well, I, mean, I think it's... Um, I want us to be, make very clear that, not, that everyone that expresses a concern about um, some a, a, under activities are not in this category. But there are, there are some, and there is, as I said, there are serious. There have been serious allegations that, um, and, and, and misbehaviour that you know has been pursued and appropriately dealt with, yeah. uh, and should have been dealt with. But um, but generally speaking, you know, it's, I think it's generally known that there are at least several organisations that um, their agenda is to, to focus on misconduct by UNRWA. And um, unfortunately, often these reports uh, can be, um, contain a significant amount of exaggeration and, and so on. So, the, I mean, the, the agenda is, and this is well known, the agenda is to, um, uh, to, to for UNRWA to be disbanded. Sure. UNRWA is the organisation that protects Palestinian refugees, that, that provides you, support. Innisbran. Thank you, Mr Innisbran. Yeah. Um, in, in saying that, the most recent allegations, I understand the nature of them are very serious. Mm. Um, and um, I understand some of those allegations were made by the is Israeli government. Um, uh, 
which go to the alleged activities of UNRWA staff. Um, uh, I'm now referencing just these allegations, not the, the history. But what which, actions? Which allegations, uh, Senator? Sorry, the most the, the, recent the, in the um, the most this, recent allegations um, uh, that were referred to in the letter we were discussing earlier. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, what actions have we seen from um, the UN to address some of these concerns? Sure. So in in relation, there were two reports, I think, in November, um, and. Um, containing concerns about UNRWA staff and social media activity and celebrating the dreadful events of um, 7 October. So the UN has um, set up a, um, UNRWA set up a very senior investigative group internally and investigated those allegations. Uh, a couple of people, they've advised us, a couple of people, two people I think were terminated. A number of people, they, um, uh, around 10, I think, um, they were conducting further investigations into and, and there were three people that they, there was no evidence uh, about. So I think the initial report said there were 30-odd pe uh, 30 odd people um, involved, but when UNRWA checked into, into it, they could only find that only about um, less than half of them actually were UNRWA employees. And this is the character of the some of these reports, some, some of the yeah. people that are involved in some of the alleged acts are under employees, but often significant numbers of people are not. Mm. And, and so it sort of gets all a bit blurred. And, um, yeah. and is that what you were referring to earlier, Mr Ennis Brown, about um, that there are, that some of the allegations or the, some of the organisations that are making these allegations do, um, from what you've seen, have an agenda? Well, that's right. I mean, there's another recent report. So when these things come up, we obviously take them very seriously and we look into them. And so there was a report recently um, that there were 3,000 um, UNRWA teachers that had a t telegram channel that were celebrating. So, you know, we had a look at that report. It's obviously a pretty serious allegation. And um, I'm not sure where the 3,000 came from, mm -hmm. but... Um, it wasn't the the channel wasn't set up by UNRWA. It was people seeking work with UNRWA, and um, there were some. The report itself only documents um, this sort of information about thirty people, not three uh, three thousand, uh, and so on. And um, the report was being promoted um, with a picture. Um, of supposedly the 3,000 people, you know, dancing in the streets about what happened on the 7th of October. So if you have a close look at the picture, um, our office in Ramallah had a good look at it. It's actually, the picture was taken before the 7th of October. It was actually people protesting outside UNRWA headquarters about getting some money for compensation for the um, 2014 conflict. So there's kind of, you know, there's sometimes kernels of truth in these claims, but there's often sort of, um, you know, the, the multiples of people involved is often, um, you know, there's a degree of exaggeration, Senator. Thank, thank you. Um, I understand, we know Australia's announced a pause of its funding pending reassurance that UNRWA's processes remain